it's good to like to come back here and over and over confirm that there is nothing we need to do to recognize open intelligence. I know I've, I've been uh, very much a doer. <laughs> I wanted to do something to understand what I'm doing so I can do it and then I get it. So coming here to the meeting, to the meetings when I just started, that was 10 years ago, it took me some time just to completely relax <laughs> and, let, um, and let myself recognize instinctively open intelligence and what it means. And um, it was uh, very supportive for me to, to hear that open intelligence is always present. To know that it's so natural for all of us. It's nothing that we need to get or achieve or we don't have right now and after the meeting we have it. So just to know that open intelligence is always present no matter what data form no matter the negativity, the blissful states, the emptiness, the doubt, the resistance, the fear. Open intelligence is at the basis of everything. That's what looking through your eyes. Simple as that. That's what is listening to these words. That's what's feeling, what is sensing, what's looking. It was very immediate for me to hear what's looking. So immediate, like I could, when I started to think about what's looking in the look, it, it just got a bit complicated. So what is looking through our eyes? It's open intelligence. Also, when we sleep, what's looking, it still remains, right? What, what is looking? What is seeing our brains? <laughs> open intelligence. So open intelligence is always present. And... Um, Stop thinking is just the introduction to open intelligence. It's not the practice, okay? So that's something to clarify. Stop thinking for a moment, just to recognize that whether you stop thinking or start thinking, open intelligence is present. So that's also a relief. We stop thinking to see what is at the basis and then thoughts are coming and they, they can't be stopped again, right? But we see that this is the basis of all of our experience, our thoughts, emotions, sensations, we call it data. And data, inseparable from open intelligence. And data appear in open intelligence, as open intelligence, in open intelligence, through open intelligence. And then the practice of short moments Again, it's not to stop thinking, but it's to completely relax body and mind whenever you remember to do it. Whenever you remember, I felt like, oh, that's so cool. I can just do it whenever I like to, or whenever I remember. I don't need even to schedule short moments. Short moment, it's not like something, uh, like something you put in your pocket and you take it with you. It's effortless. It slips into our life, into our everyday life. And that was for me at the beginning. I could test it. I could take a short moment when I felt upset or when I felt a doubt, when I felt resistant, <coughs> when I felt afraid, uh, when I felt I, it not, not so easy to be with people or social awkwardness. <coughs> so I could just test it to see how it feels like. And short moment doesn't look in a certain way too. It's like if I describe how it is for me when I take a short moment, it will be totally different for you. And it's good because you can rely on your instinctive recognition of that. You just know that you take a short moment. And this morning, for example, I, I reflected on, I just remembered how so many data used to disturb me. Like the data of not feeling good enough, for example. Um, or gifts and talents, like what will I do with my life? How will my future look like? That was something that I was thinking about a lot, a lot. And speaking with friends and speaking with uh, my husband about that and thinking of that and trying to find solution by thinking about it. 
because that's what we naturally do, right? Some we have a problem and we think about it. So that's the usual way of, uh, of living, indulging in the data. And this data, they're not any no longer um, disturbing for me. And not because um, I came to a conclusion <laughs> by my thinking. It's because I really applied the, the tools that we're giving here and taking these short moments of open intelligence where, where I felt like I'm indulging in my thoughts about it and it can be anything for each one of us. Then I saw that I'm going into stories and description, then oh, a short moment of complete relax relaxation. That's better. Oh, I can just completely relax. And it felt like sometimes so urgent. You know, like when things feel as urgent, you really want to know what you're going to do. Or if you're not going to change it now, it will always be the same. If I'm not do anything about it, so how will it change? And all this data are great to recognize as open intelligence too, and to allow ourselves to settle into our natural state, to let the things settle just like that in complete relaxation. And so a short moment like now, we can take it also in doubt. And that's amazing because doubt used to be something that for sure, if it comes up, it means something, right? That's usually doubt. And you can use the doubt to really prove to yourself that open intelligence is always present, also in doubt, also in confusion. How amazing is to feel confused and at the same time to rely on open intelligence and to be unconfused in the confusion. So everything I'm saying now can be just a total philosophy if we are not testing it in our own experience. If we really test it and pass that short moments will become continuous, that we will understand what is a short moment and that understanding, it doesn't require us to be smart or to, be, uh, to make sense of short moments or to really think about it. Oh, okay, a complete relaxation, that means I will be relaxed, right? We, we make immediate conclusion because some of us also done so many practices. I know, I done so many things. When I came to the training and I heard everything is perfect about you, I wanted to, you know, like, how do you say everything is perfect about me? There are things I really need to change. Negative emotions I don't want to have. Negative experiences, negative people. Do you have that? Negative energies of people. I don't know. I, I really believe there is a negative energy of people and that I need to isolate myself from them. I need to separate myself from them in order to guard myself, in order to keep myself pure, <laughs> keep myself happy, keep myself with a good vibe, a good energy. Wow, short moment just cut all the stories all the BS, <laughs> you know, all the things that we strongly believed and took them to be and mean something, have power on our life. And suddenly we recognize actually there is so much um, a power in resting, resting so naturally, resting just as we are with the confusion, not understanding, not getting it, resting again and again. Now, the 12 empowerments, and I know that some of you are doing it now, will train up this instinctive recognition of open intelligence. There is no way out of it. Everything that comes up, will all the answers will be in the 12 empowerments. It's like the texts are totally amazing. The guidance, and it's like the structure, everything, the questions that you have for your own experience is, is to reflect, is to get to know yourself as you truly are. And that's that's an amazing opportunity. Like all of the things for me to do the 12 empowerments and realize everything about myself as open intelligence was illuminating. Was so, it just turned so clear to me that the recognition of open intelligence is a choice. It's a matter of choice. I rather choose to be a victim of everything that comes up for me. I choose to be a victim to my doubt. Or I want to clarify my doubt. It doesn't mean to push it away, not to doubt, we don't say that, but leave the doubt as it is and rest as open intelligence, rest as awareness, rest, rest as what's looking through your eyes.
Let's just let it be as it is, and the doubt will reveal itself completely. The nature of all data is open intelligence. So there is no um, um, special data. <laughs> you know, like I believe in special state of mind. It feels so special, you know. <laughs> Do you have that? Oh, so good. This moment of, wow, bliss. So special. I have it. I got it. When someone sends me something, poof, okay, and, and then I look for it. I look for it anywhere. I looked for something that gave it to me. I looked for the person that says these words and it gave it to me, or the nature that gave it to me, or the experience that gave it to me. Why do, why do we need to do that? Why do we need to be always dependent on circumstances to feel good? Did you ever ask yourself that? This data, they will always change. <laughs> That's the confirmation. They're changing all the time. You think you have something and then not. You have something and then not again. And then you don't have something and then you have it. And then it's like, how, why to rely on something that is always changing? Why not to rely on at the source of what is at the basis of everything? I was amazed by that. Such a direct teaching. What is at the basis of our experience? Recognize that as the basis of our own experience of everything, everything that comes up. Rest as that. Rest, again, naturally. Don't look for that to look like something. It can look completely boring. How is that? So boring, you know, so boring. And probably you think that's not open intelligence. For sure I'm not doing it right. But you know what? Boredom is uh, truly open intelligence. It's pure. It's amazing open intelligence. As well as money data, doubt, resistance, fear. <laughs> speaking to people, speaking with a person, speaking to yourself, feeling confused. All of this data appear in open intelligence. So why not to gain confidence in that power of open intelligence so that we can be of benefit to ourselves and others? Not to run away from our power, not to ignore that power, like sometimes boredom, I have to do something, I can't be a, bold, a boring person. You know, I have to, okay, I'm turning on my TV. I mean, we use TV now. I turn on my computer, <laughs> I'm listening to YouTube. I can't, okay, I want that feeling of that movie, this romantic movie, so good. <laughs> I can't be born. And I'm going to tell my friends what, also about this movie. I'm thinking about one movie now. <laughs> and you know, it's like, and the music, the song, you know, I will repeat that song. It just makes me feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> and we do all kinds of things not to fail, to damp our emotions. And these amazing emotions, no matter how negative they are, they are, they are of great benefit. And if we let them be as they are, they will be recognized as that. They will have great power of benefit. It's not that they will, uh, you know, like animals, they will come out and just eat everything about us and eat the people around <laughs> us. You know, like anger. Let's take anger, for example. That, that can be wild. And we think if we let it be as it is, that will not look good. <laughs> no, that will not look good. I will not speak the way I want to speak with people. I will be an angry person. That's natural, we think that way, right? It's not a big deal. But then, you see, test short moment right there. And see for yourself, when I took short moment of open intelligence, I allowed the anger to be as it is. So I rested naturally in, at, as anger. I never, never looking at the anger. It's not like about that. It's not to witness. Everything is, you know, it's so clear that we see what we see, we hear what we hear, we feel. We don't need to look at everything anymore. That's even more effort to look, to witness, to hunt <laughs> for better experiences. So resting naturally just as we are. And I know at the beginning it sounds like we don't do anything. But you know what? It's really like that. <laughs> we don't do anything. <laughs> We don't do anything. We, we just get to know ourselves. 
as completely um, natural. Everything that comes up, the recognition of open intelligence, even if it's not clear for you now, you will see how it will come clear. And for me, it became clear with showing up just like that. Suddenly, I recognize something. And I couldn't really describe it, but it touched me. And I let that be as it is. And I recognize. And I, I did the, the, the training, the introduction training, and I wanted to do again. You know, like today we have the second part, and just to deepen that recognition. Okay, even if I doubt, let's see doubt for what it is. Even if I don't know, I don't understand, I don't get it, I want to see all of these description as what they are. I want to get to know something about me that is always there. I can always rely on. Not something that I can't always rely on. The data, we can't always rely on. You can be the most positive person. You can't rely on that. I was a positive person. I needed to always, uh, you know, <laughs> make myself positive. That was a big effort and responsibility to be a positive person. The talk from Candice, amazing. Mind is just completely open. We let the mind be as it is, and we let the mind open and release. Every data self-release. Anger comes up, stays, and then it's self-release. We don't need to even watch that. It comes naturally, and you can see it in your own experience, too, how you don't need to do anything for your data to, to go. And that's a great. Here, we ground ourselves in that recognition. And all the data flown by. <laughs>